Since the early days of CSGO and its marketplace, and Steam's marketplace by extension, there's always been pretty weird and unconventional ways to make money in the game. This video is going to take a look at some of those weird and unconventional things that people are doing to make money in CSGO and kind of analyze how good they might actually be. Before this video begins though, I'd like to encourage you to check out skimport.com. They're a great site with a minimalist UI that's going to make surfing around the website and viewing their massive inventory of items a breeze. You can also find items at very cheap prices, much lower than the Steam marketplace. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, use the link in the description below. The first weird thing we're going to be looking at in today's video is going to be crafting. Now crafting is something that a lot of people do enjoy and a lot of people do enjoy buying from the different marketplaces that CSGO has to offer, but crafts are basically on a fundamental level putting stickers onto a weapon that you think looks good as an entire combo. For example, in my lifetime in CSGO I have made two one of one crafts, the first one being an op wildfire with four keyed Cato 15 hollows, and the second one being a stat track factory new AK Phantom Disruptor with four CLG hollows from Cato 15, and I think they both look pretty good. They look good as an overall combo. The stickers sort of match the design of the weapon as well, and that's why I enjoy the crafts that I made. Now, I mentioned one of ones. One of ones are basically items that have a sticker combination on them that is completely unique to that item, and that is the only time that that sticker combination actually occurs for that item in the existence of CSGO. So if you own one of these and the sticker combination is completely unique, it becomes a one of one. Now, keep in mind that there's also such thing as technical one of ones that people don't really consider a full one of one. Those are going to be items that have random sticker combinations, like they could have just different teams applied to them, and because they're just such a random sticker combination that doesn't really exist anywhere else, they are technically the only sticker combination for that item that exists, but people don't really consider them one of ones because they're just random stickers. You could just throw random stickers onto any item and somehow create a one of one. Now what about the money making aspect of crafting, and specifically with one of ones? Well when you have an item that is so rare that only exists in one specific form, like my AK Phantom Disruptor or my Op Wildfire, those items are so rare that people are going to be willing to pay more to obtain that item because they don't want to go and get all the materials to craft it themselves, and because the item is also unique and is the only one in existence, which of course brings a lot of draw to the item. Now a lot of the money making here is actually going to be based on the fundamental of investing. You're going to have to hold on to the item and wait for it to go up in price. For example, when I first made the Phantom Disruptor craft, I bought the CLG hollows for around $80 each, and right now they're going for around $150 or so, a little bit less than that maybe on the Steam Marketplace, but that's basically going to be where the money comes in, because you have four of those stickers on the item, and so when those stickers gain value, you make it multiplied. Crafting is also pretty desirable because it allows you to have a unique item that you yourself created and that you can use for a while before you end up selling it, and once you get around to actually selling it, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to make money on it because of how stickers work as an investment. Basically, whenever a sticker increases in price, the craft will also increase in price relative to the sticker's price. So definitely not the most conventional way to make money in CSGO, but it is definitely a sort of weird alternative way that you could try out if you're looking to maybe have more of a play skin that you can actually use while the investment accrues value. If you are looking to do something like this and you do want a play skin that you can hold on to for a while and you aren't worried about the value of the item decreasing because of the stickers being applied, then I would definitely go for newer skins. Those are the ones that are going to retain the most value when they're crafted on. And then I would also make sure that you're going for a sticker that actually probably is in a position to gain value, like a Cato 15 or a Clone 14. And the final tip for that is also make sure that you're actually using a uniform sticker. So make sure you're putting stickers on the item that actually match each other, like four times of one sticker, because if you use mixed stickers, that's not going to go as well. And if you're a bit more in the budget range, another option is just to go and buy a craft off of something like Buff, and then that's going to allow you to have a craft that you didn't actually have to make yourself, so the cost is going to be a little bit lower, but finding a really good craft that's going to double as a good investment is usually pretty hard on a site like that, as most people are going to probably have a more advantageous price for themselves. The next weird money making method is actually one that's not going to gain you like crazy amounts of value like hundreds of dollars like a craft potentially could in the future, but this is actually going to be a method that's more for starting off an account. It's going to be really, really cheap stuff that you're going to probably use if you don't actually have any real money to put into an account and you just want something for free to start off with. Fair warning, this method is pretty annoying to the people you're actually trading with, so just be careful of that. And also this method is going to work better if you have a lot of friendships on Steam, which based on my audience and the fact that there's not really a lot of women watching, I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of you are just sweaty gamer nerds like myself, though as a fellow sweaty gamer nerd, this may not work for everybody. This method involves trading cards and selling them on the Steam community market. So if you have absolutely nothing to give, it is possible to send somebody a trade where you give nothing for their trading cards. And a lot of people don't really care about these trading cards. You can try to get trading cards that people have for games that they don't actually really care about too much. CSGO you might actually want to make a badge for, so if you go for something like, for me, Black Desert Online, I have a ton of those trading cards, I already have the max level badge, and I don't really care about the rest of them. So hypothetically if somebody sent me a 
trade for my Black Desert Online trading cards, I would be inclined to accept it just because I don't really care about selling them and it's a little bit of an annoyance to have to go through and sell all of those trading cards. So if you do have literally nothing but you have time to go and send these trades, it is an option to kind of build some low account value. And of course, if you want to go ahead and maybe make an investment using that low account value in something that I talked about recently, like Hype or like the Buying Big video I talked about, those are both also going to have options for you to invest that extremely low amount of money that you get from the trading cards into something that could actually make you money. RMR stickers, for example, are actually pretty cheap right now in their paper form, so that's also something you could easily buy a few of with just a few trading cards. My Black Desert Online cards also for three cents at a quick sell price. I could sell them for four if I waited, but I'd sell them for three cents if I wanted to just instantly sell them, which means I get one cent per card and I have 86 cards, so I'd get 86 cents from that, which is actually enough to buy a few RMR paper stickers or a few of the MP9 Army Machines or some Grave from the Broken Fang collection other than that. Keep in mind these trading cards would ideally be absolutely free and they are the absolute minimum value you can actually sell a trading card for and they are the absolute minimum value that you'd basically get out of a trading card so 86 cents for that is actually pretty good. All right now on to the final thing for this video and that's going to be memes. So memes are definitely a very weird way to make money because it's sort of a cultural phenomenon that occurs around humor which is pretty odd but for the most part it actually does bode well for investments if you know how to read memes in regard to the market at least. Now memes can basically happen to anything at any time so it's kind of hard to talk about potential future memes so what I will talk about is memes that have already shown success in the marketplace because they were memes. This is last week for the G2 RMR paper sticker. As some of you may know, G2 actually posted on their Instagram story that it was the last day to get their sticker, and that kind of created a huge buzz in the community. People were kind of concerned if that meant that RMR stickers were going to go off sale the next day, or if G2 was just trolling, or whatever it might have been. Regardless, G2 stickers rose a little bit, and you can see that noticeable difference on the last week graph here. This isn't so much a direct humorous meme as it is just a buzz in the community because of a Instagram story like this that has some weird information, but it is still an example of how this information can spread and how people talking about seemingly insignificant things can actually create buzz. A much better example would probably be when TDMA Zeus was trying to get the P250 Sand Dune Minimal Wear to rise in price, and as you can see, it actually did rise quite a bit, up to around 14 cents, and it actually was on the front page of the Steam Community Market for a brief period of time when that event happened, and that was a direct humorous meme. There's also our lovable misfit from the Broken Fang operation, Number K, who actually held his value a lot better than a lot of the other agents just because of people liking him for the fact that he may have had something on his head. Regardless, it's clear to see that memes do have an impact in the CSGO community, and when different memes can spiral out of control, it can actually affect the market as well in significant ways, so that is also a way to make money if you're good at having your finger on the pulse of Gen Z humor. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it and you think it's an interesting concept, be sure to leave me a comment below telling me that you think this is a really interesting thing, and I'll try to make a series out of this if possible, and also be sure to like the video to also show that same kind of thing. I'm going to be getting on a consistent schedule here now that I have more time. I actually have been pretty busy working on something for the past few months here that you'll be able to see soon, so when that comes around, you'll be able to know why. There is a break in between videos, of course, and I also had a pretty busy last couple weeks here, so that's why I wasn't able to get a video out. But anyway, this video is now here, and hopefully a more consistent schedule comes with it. I will see you all next time. Be sure to check out Skimport, my Twitter, and my Discord links in the description below. See you next time. Peace.